Hi, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a Microsoft Excel video on basic charts and graphs. So charts and graphs can be used to uh, visually summarize and display uh, data from tables. Now, charts and graphs are not usually going to be good for mega tables, tables with lots of columns and lots of rows. It's more like it's good for summarized tables, which is why if you do pivot charts, there are, excuse me, pivot tables, then you can make pivot charts from those pivot tables. But you may also just have some fairly small tables or tables where you've simplified information, like the ones I'll show you in here, where it's pretty easy to make a chart from these. But if I had a table of like 50 different market segments, or I was making a table with, oh, I don't know, 20 products and then some information for how they sold each month, that would be too much information to make a really good chart out of because it would just be too much data to, to, to visually handle for the average person and you would probably want to leave it in, in a table. But in this case, we should be able to make a pretty decent little line chart from this. So this is going to be a segment comparison by month. We'll be taking a look at the comparison of sales in by month of the home and then of the business segment of the market for Prisvar Tech. So I'm going to just click somewhere in this table. This is an actual Excel table object. You could tell because it looks like one and it has all of these little uh, filter buttons in it. And you can see the table design up here. But what we want to do is go up to insert and then we can go up into the insert tab ribbons charts area. Now, for folks that are really experienced with charts and graphs, they will tend to know what they're looking at with their data and be able to choose right away and say, oh, yes, I want a line chart, or I want this one, or I want that one. But if you're not sure, or you'd like to see recommendations based on how Excel is assessing the data that it's going to be making a chart of, you could use recommended charts. And in here, you'll have two tabs, recommended charts and then all charts. You may decide you really still want to use something over here if it's applicable to really representing in a graphic way the data that you want to present. But the recommended charts can be a good starting place. So for instance here, I, I'm recommending a line chart. That's what I'd like to do. But you could do column charts. A clustered column means that it would be a column for home and a column for business and seeing how they compare to each other visually, as well as how they compare with the, the, the amount of sales and by month. Or you could do what they call a stacked column. So instead of seeing them one next to each other, you can sort of see here instead the blue represents home sales and then the orange represents business sales. It depends on what your, your employer wants and what makes sense for the audience. Same thing with um, bars. Bar charts could do the same thing. And you can also have stacked bars. Now here, this is an interesting one. I, I, I've never really used the funnel for anything, and I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to tell me, except that it's nice looking, but I don't particularly want to do that. Then we have a Pareto chart. Well, what I'd like to do is see if we could do a line chart. So let's take a look at a line. And there's two different kinds of line charts. This one is focusing on a line for every month, which looks kind of confusing. And this one is focusing on a line chart for just the two segments, home and business. And this one indicates, in a sense, of what the activity is over the period of time, not necessarily a bar chart of the amounts or the sales themselves. I mean, this is still of the sales, but it's just representing it a little differently. So I'm going to choose this one, click OK, and the chart's going to appear automatically on the same sheet. Oops. Now, you can um, grab the chart object and move it around. I'm just trying to move it down, and I'm going to make, the, make that a little, and then drag it down like that. You do need to be careful when you're grabbing things, because you could accidentally grab something and then suddenly start moving the wrong thing. It's like, ah! So just make sure you know your Control-Z, which is your undo button. The charts will tend to come in without a specific title, so you can come in and manually title it yourself. So this is a um, line chart of, of monthly sales by segment or segment sales by month. Actually, um, let's see here. Let's say monthly sales by 
let's see, uh, customer segment. And you could even put 2022, 2022. So you know it's for this year or this past year as opposed for, you know, 2021 or, you know, 2008. So that's basically a simple way to make a chart. Let's go take a look and see about another one here. So we do um, column chart, bar chart. I'm going to go ahead and close this down. Uh, regional says, let's do a donut chart. So a donut chart and a pie chart are very similar. They just look a little bit different, but they basically work kind of the same way. So I believe we've got, um, no, we'll just stick with the donut chart. Basically, you would be wanting to look at one kind of data over one period of time or one type of sales over one region. Something that's very simple that could be seen in a pie chart in terms of segments of a pie rather than bars or columns that you kind of compare of several things to each other. So in this case, I'm going to just select the table, click into it, make sure I'm in it. Now this table I actually gave a name to, so that's a good thing. I'm going to come up to insert, and again I can go ahead and do recommended charts. Or if I'm not sure um, if I want to go through that trouble and I know I want to do a pie chart or a donut chart, I can click insert pie or donut chart. And this will give me a chance to choose between like two dimensional pies, a three pie, or a donut chart. But first I'd like to just get more familiar with the recommended charts and see if a pie chart is actually recommended. Now in this case, I can see that you could use a clustered column, but since there's only two things for each um, region here, to be looking at, and we're not actually looking, or actually not region, these are actually um, biomes. So all of the western regions fall into west, all of the eastern regions fall into east, and the very northern and middle of the country regions fall into the mid. So these are biomes rather than separate regions, which I believe this company has eight or nine separate regions. But so this, this is okay, you can, you can do this. You can do this, it doesn't really, you know, tell you all that much, but uh, you could choose to do any of these. But I find for something like this, a pie chart would be better. So I'll go over and look at all charts, check pie. And in this particular case, it's not really terribly exciting because it, the, the amounts are so close. But if I do a, a, a donut chart, it stands out just a little bit better. Now the thing is here, I have to decide, do I want to look at the donut chart based on the two time periods, or do I want to look at the donut chart based on the three biomes? And what will that tell me? I'm going to just for kicks choose the three biomes. Click OK. This is my chart. And I'm going to just say um, biomes, biome sales by date. Now, interestingly, some things happen here. When I'm in the chart, this automatically opens up a format chart area when I'm in it. And that stays open until I close it. But you also can come up here to the contextual chart design menu, and you can go to the format chart area information up here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down here and then move this over. So in this particular case, for the chart design, and we could actually do that also with the comparison. If you come over to the comparison chart, you also have the chart design, and you can look for pre-existing designs which stand out and maybe make it look a little different and so on. But let's go back to our donut chart. So I click on the chart. I have the chart design. I can take a look in here and see if something makes a little bit more sense to me. So for instance... It changes where the legend is. It changes whether there's call outs. It changes, so like this one actually shows call outs. This one here does too. And, and, and essentially what's happening here is we're seeing all three biomes and we're seeing the two business segments in each biome and they both haven't really changed all that much, but that's why you see these numbers like this. So if I were to choose this one, okay, so I have call outs but it's, they, they overlap each other a little bit. So you are absolutely free to grab something and move it. Now you have to be careful because you may have to grab more than one thing. What I want, eh, what I want, I'm gonna click. 
these and see if I can grab and move this. There we go. So I had to sort of try to click separately to, and it's really hard to see, but then um, I held my shift key down and I did that. And so this is for the inner one and that's for the outer one. This is still probably not the world's best example of a chart for this because there wasn't really very much uh, change in these particular tables. So let me go in here and, and just for, for, for video sake, let's make this 67% and then that goes down to 36. And then um, we're going to go and make this 47% oh, and 55 or 66. This isn't accurate numbers, but if you could see what's happening with the donut chart, then things are changing in it. So at which time you might decide, you know, a donut chart is not quite the right way to look at it. Might be better if you are actually only looking at one date range. So let's choose this and there we go. See? So anyway, charts allow you to do those sorts of things. Finally, the last one I'm just going to show you in this video is a little something called spark lines. Spark lines are pretty cool because once you have spark lines in, you can type over them and have both a graphical view and some text over it. So a spark line is based on certain data and it will show like a little mini graph, but instead of giving a separate chart or graph, it just does it within a cell itself. So what I'm going to do is come into insert, the insert tab ribbon. I'm going to come over to the spark lines group and I'm going to click line. And in here, what I want is this line to represent all of the information in these quarters. And that's what I get. Now, I wonder if I can copy this down. Yes, it looks like I can. Because what's happening is it's representing this in the cells that are relative to the location of where this little um, spark line is going to be. This is not um, based on absolute values in a very specific se uh, cell. So I should be able to copy this same activity downwards like this. Oops, let me try that again. Copy, paste. And you can see the spark lines look different for each range there. Now, what I meant by that you could type over it, you can then go here and say, you know, I'd like to see the sum of this information. And now I've got the sum of the information showing up in the same cell that the spark lines are. At the same time, you need to do the spark lines first. I tried to do it by putting the sum in there first and then adding the spark line regard, uh, relating to this information. And Excel just kind of shook its head and said, no. You could do the same thing with little columns. So in here, instead of doing a spark line, I could come and insert. I could insert a column and do the same thing, the same data range, and then I get the columns. And whether it's the spark line or whether it's the columns, you have a contextual spark line uh, ribbon up here. So you can go ahead and you can change colors. So maybe you really want them to, to show up, it be very light color. But it's like in that case, the column, I might just leave like this, but over here for the spark line, I might want to come over here and make it so that it's a very light colored orange in the background. I can see it, but I can still see the text of this information and make sure it goes into a county format and get rid of the zeros. And then I can see if I can copy this down. I'm not sure what's going to happen for multiple levels of things. Ah, so it did it. It not only copied down the spark line, but it copied down the update to the spark line uh, format. And it also put the, the actual sum in here that I wanted to see. So that's a little bit about how you can add charts and graphs into Excel. Thanks very much.